Scripture tonight will be from Philippians, the third chapter. It says, not that I have already obtained or am already made perfect. Although we have attained the spirit of Christ and we have been made perfect through Christ, he says, but I press on. Here's what, that's what God gave me today. I press on. And that's what we've been doing all this week. We've been pressing on. Pressing on that I may obtain. See, we're pressing on to obtain the fullness of what God's given us. That for which Christ Jesus also obtained. That's what we should be looking forward. That's what we should be pressing in for, to obtain what Jesus obtained. Brothers, I could not yet have obtained it, but one thing I do. And here's something that we don't do. He says, I forget the things that are behind. This is something that the enemy likes to really do with us is bring up our past. And what we have to remember is it's past. And every time he brings it up, the enemy, we need to leave it in the past. And stretch forward, forward to the things that are ahead. In another place, he talks about running a race. You don't run a race from the past. You run the race forward. You're stretching to go forward to win the race. So I looked up the word press. It says move or cause to move into a position of contact with something by exerting continuous physical force. Wow. Physical force it takes to press in. The rest of Philippians 3, 14 and 16 says, I press on towards the goal to the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. See, that's our goal, to be the fullness of Jesus Christ. Ooh, hallelujah. Let those of us who are mature. Hmm. Where do you stand in Christ? Do we ever really obtain the fullness before we leave this earth? The enemy doesn't want us to grow any more spiritually. He wants us to stagnate. Like Monday was for me the day we missed. Oh, it was terrible. I didn't think I was going to get over it. It's just one day, one day. Oh. <laughs> so let those of us who are mature have this attitude, pressing on. If you have a different attitude, <laughs> God will show you how to think. You see, when we live in the past, we live on things in the past, or we live on things that happen on earth, we're not listening to God. We're thinking on our own. However, we should be guided by what we have learned so far. And what I've learned so far you better be doing it daily, daily, daily. Wow. Thank you, Father, for your word. We're going to remember bread and cup. We're going to remember Jesus Christ, who gave his all. <laughs> he left his throne in glory and came down into an earthly body. Lived in the flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. But the world didn't want nothing to do with him. Wow. He gave his all. Yes, it was, it was rough at times. He prayed in the garden. Stressful in the garden. 
where even the sweat drops were like blood because he knew what he was facing. He gave his all. What more could he good? What more can we do but be a living sacrifice? A living sacrifice for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together to a time when we can remember bread and cup. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he gave bread and he gave thanks. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Partake of the bread. And after supper, he took the cup and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. Do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. Thank you, Father, for a way to remember. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's partake of the cup.